Hey guys, so in a previous video, I showed you guys how to skin parts in real carbon fiber. Now in this video, if those parts become cracked or broken, I'm gonna show you how to fix them. So today we're gonna be working with this rear diffuser, and it's of course made of carbon fiber, and you can see here along the back lip, there's a bit of a crack. Now if I zoom in a little closer, you can see that the crack is into the clear coat and it hasn't gone all the way through to the actual fibers, but I'll explain how to fix those as well. For now though, we're gonna start by cleaning this part and we're gonna clean it thoroughly with some soap and water and then we'll move on to using just a rag and some isopropyl alcohol. So after using the soap and water and now just rubbing it down with some alcohol, the area should be sufficiently clean to get started. And you're gonna to wanna to clean not just the crack itself, but just the general area as well, because we're gonna to have to blend this section in. And now it's time to grab some masking tape and we're gonna mask around this area, leaving about an inch or so, maybe even an inch and a half exposed. So with the area now masked, the rest of this process is gonna be very similar to other types of bodywork. And we're gonna start by sanding the exposed area. And we're gonna start with a low grit sandpaper. So I have about hundred grit sandpaper and what I wanna do is I wanna scuff this area up and feather the edges where the carbon fiber is exposed. Now, if you have a hairline crack, you can just go over the whole thing and sand the crack down. But if you have areas where the fiber has been exposed, you don't want to sand this area. You wanna very carefully sand around and feather the edges. You don't want to sand the fiber itself. If you happen to touch the fiber and sand it, and you disrupt the weave, you'll probably be able to see that at the end when we go to apply new resin, and you'll see that the area has been repaired, you'll see a blemish in the fiber itself, in that weave. So you wanna try and avoid that the best you can. So let's go ahead and sand this with the 100 grit sandpaper and feather these edges. So after cleaning with the 100 grit sandpaper, we can use some compressed air and clean this section off and get ready for some higher grit sandpaper. So we're gonna probably move up to about 200 or 220 and we're gonna just smooth this out a little bit more. Again, trying not to touch the actual fiber, but just feathering the edges. So after the 220 grit sandpaper, we're gonna again clean the area off with the compressed air. And now we can go back to cleaning this section with some alcohol in preparation for covering the section with a coat of resin. So at this point, once I put the alcohol on there, it'll look pretty good. But again, you can still see the fiber showing through if you look close enough. And so I'm gonna let that dry. It's gonna dry and still end up looking a little bit hazy, of course, because we did sand it. And then we're gonna go ahead and start mixing up our resin. Now for our resin, I'm gonna be using this System 3 epoxy resin, and it's just general uh, carbon fiber epoxy resin. Of course, it has a hardener that goes along with it as well. And this is the same stuff that I used in my video about skinning carbon fiber parts. So my resin mixture is now ready in this cup, but one other thing to note is that in the previous clips, I was using a sanding block to sand down this area, and the sanding block was big enough that it was hitting the edges of the tape, and I was starting to sand down the edges of the tape. Now, I would have ended up with a very sharp line there, so what I did was I moved the tape out, and I feathered this area out a little bit more. Of course, I cleaned it again, and now it's ready for the application of this resin. So I'm just gonna be using a foam brush 
to paint a little bit of the resin onto this area, making sure that I soak it into this area with the exposed fiber. And one other thing is if you're working on a table that you care about, it's probably a good idea to put something underneath like some cardboard because this stuff will drip. And when it cures, it's gonna harden into a rock-like substance. So it's gonna be very difficult to get off. I laid down some chipboard, but of course you can put cardboard or whatever else you need to put under there to protect your table. Now, the resin itself, I mixed a very small amount because we're fixing a very small area. But if you're fixing a larger area, you're gonna to wanna to do this in small portions. So you don't wanna mix a large batch of this resin. The resin itself is an exothermic reaction. So this gives off heat, but it also uses heat to cure. So if you start mixing this in large batches, what you'll find is that the gel time that's listed on the label of the actual resin and hardener will no longer apply. You'll end up with a very short gel time and a very short curing time. And that stuff is gonna get really hot. It might even get hot enough to melt through the cup if you mix enough of it at once. So you wanna do this in small bits. If you had multiple sections, you'd wanna fix one section at a time and just mix small amounts. So we're ready to get started. I've mixed this up thoroughly. And like I said, I'm just gonna use this foam brush and we're gonna start painting it on. So while I do this, I said earlier that I was gonna explain what to do if you have a part that's cracked all the way through the fiber. And so I would approach it similar to a cracked fiberglass part where I would cut away all the bad parts and then you'd have to reinforce it with some new cloth. So I would get some heavy carbon fiber cloth and I would apply it to the back side, soak it in resin and I would bridge that big crack. And then on the front side, you can actually buy resin that comes with uh, chopped carbon fiber already in it. And then I would apply it to the front side and I would build that up until I get a nice even level surface that I could sand out and polish smooth. So unfortunately, if you have a crack that's that bad, then your part is probably never gonna look the same. However, you can repair it so it's functional and strong again. Luckily for me, this wasn't the case. So this process requires a lot of patience. We're gonna have to come back and do a few coats of this to make sure we completely fill in that crack. Now, depending on what type of resin and hardener you purchase, there will be different gel times. So I wanna come back when the area is just tacky to the touch. So it's not completely dry and that's when I'm gonna apply my second coat and then wait a few hours again and apply the third coat. So this is probably gonna take me all day. I'm gonna to have to come back a few times and keep applying that. And I think the depth of the crack was pretty shallow for me. And so I'm probably gonna to have to come back maybe three times at most and completely fill this area in. And then we can get back down to the sanding steps. So with the magic of filming, when I come back, I'm gonna have done about three coats of this resin. So after three light coats of resin, things are looking a little bit better. It's glossy again, and you can no longer see where that crack used to be. However, under certain light, this piece is a little bit wavy, and we're gonna fix that because now after three coats, there should be no more low spots in relation to the original surface. And so what this means is that we'll take down the high spots with some sandpaper and basically create a nice uniform surface, and we're gonna polish it out so that we get a nice gloss that matches the original surface finish. Now, in between the previous coats of resin, I had applied them while those coats, while the previous coat was still tacky. So if I had touched it with my finger, it would have been a little bit sticky. And then I applied the next coat on top. Now, if you took too much time and you let the previous uh, coat of resin completely dry, then what you'd need to do is you would need to scuff up that surface with some sandpaper to promote adhesion with the next layer. Otherwise, if you just put the resin on top, you risk the chance of that delaminating and then chipping back off, and you might be able to see the separation of the two layers. So at this point, I'm gonna grab the 220 grit sandpaper and start knocking down some of the high spots and try and get rid of some of this waviness. So after using the 220 grit sandpaper, you'll see that the surface is looking quite a bit more even, and I'm just gonna blow the dust off of this. And so what you'll notice when you're sanding is that you have dark spots, kind of like the one you see here. This is still a low spot. So the sandpaper glides over all the high spots and wipes them away, but the low spots remain and they'll look dark. So now I still have this tiny bit of a low spot here and I can feel it a little bit with my finger. And at this point I need to determine whether or not this is acceptable for me. Um, this is a rear diffuser. It goes under the back of my car. I could probably live with this small imperfection here. However, if this is your hood or something else, maybe in the interior of your car that you're fixing, 
and you don't want any small blemishes, then you're gonna have to go back and at this point reapply another coat of resin. And you're gonna wanna try and hit this low spot here, fill it in, and then come back and do the same process and sand down so that your surface is completely even. Now if I wipe this with the rubbing alcohol to get rid of the rest of that, you'll see that it's not really noticeable. It's somewhere here, I can still feel it a little bit. And so like I said, for this project, I can probably live with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next uh, grit of sandpaper. So I'm probably gonna move up to about 400 and then 800, 1200 and continue on to start until I wet sand at about 2000 grit sandpaper. At that point, the resin will still look a little bit hazy and then we're gonna hit it with some polish. So I'm not gonna film each stage, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start sanding with the uh, next grit consecutively working my way up until like I said, about 2000 grit with a wet sand. And let's take a look at how that's gonna turn out. So this is where we're at after all the different stages of sanding all the way up to a 2000 grit wet sand. And you can see that the haziness has mostly gone away and the part feels and looks pretty smooth, but just a little bit dull. So we're gonna bring back the shine by polishing with just a generic um, car polish. And I'm gonna be using turtle wax with this mother's Powerball uh, polishing kit. And we're gonna bring back the shine in this area. Now, if you look closely, you'll notice some other blemishes that the sanding has revealed. And there's these little white dots down here. And these are actually little air bubbles. So when I was applying the resin, some air got trapped inside the resin. And now you can see them as these little tiny dots. And for this part, this, like I mentioned, is a rear diffuser. It's going pretty much under my car. You're not really gonna see this. I just wanted to fix the crack. But if this is a cosmetic part and you do wanna fix little air bubbles that you have trapped in your resin, well, you're gonna have to go back and sand again. So you're gonna go back and you're gonna sand all these air bubbles down apply the resin again, this time hopefully not getting any air bubbles trapped in there, and then go through the sanding process again, making it smooth. So this is a very time consuming and tedious process to fix something like this. So it really has to be worth it to you in order to fix carbon fiber parts. Okay, so here we are after a few minutes of polishing with the mother's Powerball on the end of a cordless drill. I was using Turtle Wax Polishing Compound, just a generic uh, polishing compound to achieve these results. And a lot of the gloss has come back. I might polish it for another minute or so, but there's a few very important things to keep in mind if you're doing this polishing with a power tool, such as a cordless drill or whatever else. Um, the big thing is let the polishing compound and the pad do the work. Don't press too hard and don't go too fast. If you have your drill on a high setting and you really go at it hard, you might actually melt right through the resin and the uh, polishing compound will produce enough friction to do that. So just definitely go easy, take your time with it, um, don't press too hard and you'll end up with a pretty decent finish and keep things clean, that's the other big thing. Before you even start this process, clean the whole part down again with water and some rubbing alcohol and through the process do the same thing. You definitely don't wanna polish in dust or dirt or whatever particles are around because those will actually embed themselves into the resin and you'll see them in the final finish and you might end up with more scratches than uh, a shiny glossy surface that you're shooting for. So that's pretty much the results here. Like I said, I might do a little more work on this piece, um, but overall this is not a cosmetic piece for me, so I really don't care. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys the process of fixing a crack uh, in the actual resin itself and just to end up with at least half decent results. Obviously, the more time you put into this, the better the results, and you're gonna end up with something that you can definitely be proud of and show off again. So that's all there is to it, guys. I hope that this video gives you guys a little bit of hope in restoring your expensive carbon fiber parts. They don't need to be thrown out. I appreciate you guys watching this video and supporting my channel. And if you guys are interested in making your own carbon fiber parts from scratch, keep watching to the end of this video, and I'll give you guys a link to another video of mine where I show you guys how to make your own carbon fiber parts.